how did you actually connect with the group? Did y'all grow up or did y'all kind of come together, you know, on the basis of music? Um, it was, it was kind of both, you know, we, we grew up a mile from each other and, um, actually Deron and myself was in the same, um, middle school and we were in the same chorus classes and stuff. And, um, we we just we met each other prior to going to middle school. We were in the same summer camp, and um and we just we just kicked it. You know we we just he would he would sneak into the sanctuary and play the piano, and every time that I heard the piano, you know of course me being a musician like it just it just sparked something in me, and I was like man this somebody's playing the piano, um uh, um. They ain't playing gospel music, bro. You know what I mean? Like he's he's in there playing R and B, he's in there playing uh Beethoven, he's in there playing everything else but gospel music. So when I heard it, of course, it just naturally, you know, sunk spoke to me. So I opened the door and find out it's like, man, that's a dude that um, you know, that I was kicking it with that I had no idea could play the piano. And so I just assumed that, you know, he was just cool because you know, that we were all laughing at the same things and stuff with him. So I just assumed he was cool with him, but didn't know that he was musically inclined. We went to middle school together and I, I find out, I was like, yo, you're in my class now. So that's how, you know, he and I got together. And that was the genesis of Forte slash 112. And then once we got into high school, which was about two years later, no, it's about a year later. I'm sorry. About a year later. Um, that's when that's when we met Q and we met Slim. And, you know, that's. Pretty much, but we all were in like a mile from each other. Like we all grew up within a mile radius of each other, and uh, that's you know, if if that ain't destiny, I don't know what is. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, most definitely one of the greatest groups to ever form. You know what I'm saying? It's just magical that y'all, like you say, was within a mile of each other. You met in middle yep. school and high school. That's what's up. Middle school, um, high school. Okay, and I want to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to <laughs> ask you about a. Uh, the the name one twelve. What is the significance of that number? What made y'all change the name from four two sure. to one? Sure, the name one twelve actually came from. Well, let me let me back up a little bit. We called ourselves Forte, which was an acronym for Forever on Route to Excellence, right? But at the time that we were trying to come out and we were getting ready to be signed to uh, to Puffy and Bad Boy, rapping Forte out in the West Coast was out doing his thing or whatever. So we didn't want to confuse the two. So we knew we had to change the name, right? But we was we were stuck on the name. We were trying to figure out what name could we go with. And we kept throwing names out at each other, man. And it just, nothing never really stuck. And um, we, but at the same time, Puffy was coming down from Atlanta, uh, from New York to Atlanta to, you know, hit the club scene, find new artists, work with Usher Raymond at the time. Uh, he, yeah, he was working on Usher's uh, project at the time. So, um, and he wanted new talent. And our managers at the time knew Puff, and he introduced us and the whole nine. But he still was on the fence about whether or not he wanted to sign us and stuff. So every time that he came to Atlanta, it was y'all got to hang out with me, y'all got to kick with me, I got to really see do y'all had this kind of connection that everybody say y'all do with the with with the with the fan base. Can y'all sing or can y'all sing? Like you know, these were the things that Puff was concerned about. So uh, we actually met him in front of One Twelve. And uh, because we were kids, we couldn't get into one twelve. But um, Puff on his way in was like, "Yo, y'all come with me." He was like, "Puff, we can't come in, bro. Like we we kids, you know. Like we it, it, like it's obvious that we're young and we can't go in this club." He was like, "Why? Well, right. well, sing in front of this crowd right now, you know what I'm saying?" And if and if you know anything about one twelve at that time, one twelve was like the biggest club in Atlanta, right? And anybody that co was coming in from any other city, they knew if I don't go to one, if I don't do nothing else, I got to go to one twelve. And around that time, 112 line was wrapped around the corner, right? And so this dude was like, yo, so I ain't seen. And we just started singing. And the crowd went from being a line, you know, trying to get into, into 112 to like a semicircle around us. And these girls and everything, they just listened to us sing. And we crooning, man. I'm telling you, we like, we singing everything we possibly can. We singing gospel music. We singing opera. We singing rock songs. We singing... R&B, man, we doing everything we possibly can to, to let these folk know how talented we really are. And um, and, and, it, and it worked because Puff sat there, man, and he was like, yo, they got it. You know what I mean? They kept the crowd. They sung. You know, it, it, they, it was in the rain. It was dark. It was cold. And these dudes just, you know, stung their hearts out or whatever. So we sat down with him the next day. He was like, man, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all need, y'all got it. Y'all came up with a name yet? Y'all came up with it? He's like, no, nah, man. He's like, 
shit, man, y'all need to call y'all selves like, oh, my man, like 112 or something, you know what I mean? To to be synonymous with Atlanta, you know, because any at the time, if, if, if anybody that was anybody that went down to everybody that was anybody that came down to Atlanta knew of 112. It was synonymous with Atlanta. We wanted everybody to know that we were from Atlanta. We weren't from New York. We were from Atlanta. And, um, and and it just the name just stuck. As soon as we heard it, we were like, "Yeah, one twelve, like let's let's go." You know what I'm saying? That's the name. You know what I mean? Because um, we wanted we wanted to just etch in stone where we were from and what we was representing stuff, man. And uh, it didn't work <laughs> initially because people thought we was from 112th Street in New York. You know what I mean? But um, until you heard us speak, and then you were like, "Oh, okay, they southern." You know what I mean? So. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where the name originated from, man. It's like we we felt like one twelve was like the best way that we could represent where we were from, you know what I mean, without being too corny about it. Oh yeah, I mean, like you say, it definitely worked out in the long run. Um, let me see. I wanted to ask you, by y'all coming from Atlanta, coming from the South, y'all was definitely one of the earlier groups, you know, while the East was still in power, you know. So uh, what I'm trying to ask you is. Um, how much has the music scene changed, you know, compared to what it was back then to now in terms of Atlanta, you know, because Atlanta um, is running, you know what I'm saying? So Right, right. Well, you know, that's a great question, because at the time, you know, you had your outcasts, you had your goody mobs, you had your um, you had a lot of groups to eat the uh, 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 Lil John and the East Side Boys. You had a lot of groups that keep in mind, Atlanta at that time felt as though we were the second class citizens, you know, because like you said, it was either you you were either from New York or you were from L.A. Now, those are the only people that was actually making, as far as a lot of people was concerned, the only people that was making noise in the music industry, either you from New York or you from L.A., right? So the South at that point felt like we had something to say and we weren't going to be denied anymore. You know what I mean? And, and even with us being um, R&B singers, we we were still from Atlanta. We were still from the same streets that Outkast came from. We were still from the same streets that Goody Mob came from. We were still from the same streets that all these down south rappers who were, you know, on their way to becoming superstars was from. You know, we understood, we knew the same streets they were talking about. You know, that we rode them same streets. I'm a Grady baby. Like I actually was born in Grady. You know what I mean? Grady Hop. So uh it was it, it was important for us to let the world know just how talented. We were, and it wasn't just about bass music, and it wasn't all about R and B music. It was a culmination of of all of those things. We were very uh, conscious about what was going on in the world, and because uh, it, it, the the stigma uh, is, you know, not even just in the music industry, but just in life. Period. That if you're from the, you're from the south, you're considered slow. You're you're not as intelligent as your New York counterpart or your LA or West Coast counterpart, and uh, we wanted to. We wanted to get rid of that stick, you know what I mean, and let people know that we are we are just as intelligent, if not more. Uh, we're just as talented, if not more. And, you know, we definitely had something to say. But the music scene was more about re being rebellious at that time and just, you know, basically saying that if you don't allow this door to be open, we're going to kick it down. You know, that was pretty much the theme that you had with all our music, man. We just wanted the world to know that we were just as talented. Fast forward 20 years. And it seems like everything that's on the radio right now has an Atlanta influence in it. You know what I mean? And uh, so it, it was it's kind of weird being in that, you know, being in that space where it's like, man, huh, 20 years ago, we could barely get somebody to play our music. Now, you know, everybody has to have some kind of down south influence, you know, in order to for a record to be successful nowadays. And they ain't even from the south. You know what I mean? So the 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 180. That has transpired, man. It's just really, it's really crazy to me. I'm all for it, you know what I mean, because it's all about progression, and uh, we actually succeeded in the in the goal, you know what I mean, of, of making sure that the world knew that down south music was just as important and prevalent as uh, East Coast or West Coast music. But uh, but at the same time, I still feel like we got a long way to go. <laughs> 